Next to Milham Castle stands the idyllic Holy Trinity Church, a beautiful and ancient building. There has been a church on this site since at least 1120 AD, although it has been much rebuilt and modelled over the years. The church we see here has been extended and remodelled over the centuries. What we see today is the result of a radical restoration in 1930. The nave and chancel date from Norman times and the south aisle from around the 13th century, although rebuilt and remodelled a century later, and the entrance porch dates from 1910. But there is evidence of even older activity on the site. Here, set into the north wall of the chancel, are two fragments of carved red sandstone that came to light in 1930. These fragments are believed to date from the 10th century and suggest that there may have been a church in this site for over a thousand years. The larger piece of stone is incised with a Stafford Knapp design and the smaller is the centre of a crosshead. Just as intriguing as the two stone fragments is a sandstone slab with the incomplete inscription of Antef, which was also discovered in 1930. The slab, now placed above the ombre niche in the south wall of the sanctuary, has been dated to the Roman occupation of Britain. But this doesn't necessarily indicate Roman settlement on the site or at Milan. The slab could have been brought by land or sea from a Roman fort such as the one at Ravenglass. Within the church there are many reminders of the Middle Ages. The niche, as well as the piscina, are both 12th century in date and are both still in use today for their original purposes. Also, there is a piece of buff coloured sandstone found during work done to the church in 1930. This is most likely to have been a consecration cross and is now set below the sill of the southwestern window in the Huddleston Isle. This, the Huddleston Isle, is named after the family who lived at the next door castle for over 500 years. The isle includes a massive east window and three large pillars making up the south aisle. There are still visible reminders of the Huddleston influence, as well as that of Furness Abbey in the font at the back of the church. The font, although rather crisp and fresh, dates from medieval times, perhaps early 14th century. The font is made of red sandstone and is octagonal in shape, with one panel being plain and five ornamented with quatrefoils. The font is also decorated with the Huddleston coat of arms and the arms of Furness Abbey. One of the most remarkable things in this church is the west window, the so-called fluke or fish window. Shaped like a fish's bladder or an almond, it stands an impressive 10 feet tall and spans 7 feet across unusually large for a window of this type. Also, there are several tombs of varying age within the church, all for members of the Huddleston family. The large red sandstone tomb, which is that of Sir John Huddleston, a man of influence and activity who died in 1494 and the alabaster tomb, which is probably that of Richard Huddleston, grandson of Sir John Huddleston, and his wife Elizabeth Dacre. Both died young, very early in the 16th century. Each of the tombs have damage, most likely obtained during the Civil War, and the slab of the sandstone tomb has scored onto it a table for playing the game Fox and Geese. As well as this, the edges have been used for the sharpening of knives. The church underwent extensive restoration and remodelling, first in the 1850s and again in 1930, to leave the church as it looks today. After the First World War, a marble tablet recording the names of the fallen was unveiled, and a new organ was installed in the West Gallery as a war memorial. The church continues to do what it has always done and always meant to do.
It is a place of worship, a centre for the community, a warm and friendly place for young and old alike. All are welcome here at Holy Trinity Church.